Let's say that you're the principal at Viteris Elementary. It's the beginning of a new school year, and you're eager to find out how your students did on the SBAC that you gave last spring. You're focusing on math at the moment, and this afternoon you'll be meeting with the three members of your fifth grade team to discuss their results. Your big question is, how did my fifth grade classes do in math? From the state reporting site, you already know that 47% of fifth grade students across California scored at the met or exceeded standard level. You're hoping to do better than that. You open up the report and, hooray, 50% of your fifth grade students scored at the met or exceed level. And not only that, but all three of your fifth grade classrooms had the same pass rate, 50%. Fantastic, you can't wait to deliver the good news. Your fifth grade students did well in math, beating the state average by three whole points. Congratulations, fifth grade team. You all did equally well on SPAC. 50% of all of your students scored at the Met or Exceed level. And... Deafening silence. Teacher A speaks up. Eh, hang on a minute. Let's take a look at my student scores a little bit closer. I've used these coffee beans to represent my students. Here's the threshold between meeting standard and not meeting standard. But that's not the whole story. There is not met, nearly met, met, and exceeded, with other threshold in between. Student scores range from 2201 all the way to 2701. While 50% of my students met standard, you'll see that I had students at all levels this year. Their math scores ranged across the spectrum, from the bottom all the way to the top. Teacher B speaks up next. Whoa there. Let's take a look at my class. In this case, I represented them with almonds, but you can see that they're all grouped at the top and the bottom. How am I supposed to teach to students so far above and so far below grade level at the same time? It's like I'm teaching third grade and seventh grade all at once. Teacher C waits a minute before chiming in. Well, all of my students ended the year right around the passing cut point. I got all of my students within spitting distance of passing. You're flabbergasted. The data you were given led you to think that all three of your fifth grade classes did equally well, but the story in each classroom couldn't be more different. Whew, deep breath. Let's step back a minute. Team, I must apologize. I put too much stock in a single number. I knew the proportion of students in each of your classes that scored better exceed, but I didn't have any information about the distribution of scores within your class. Why don't we try this again, but this time with all of the information that we need? Teacher A, tell me how your students did on SBAC this year. You know, I think that we need to reframe this conversation. I know that you've been thinking a lot about LCAP targets and the accountability game, but I want to know how much my students learned. Maybe they started the year off way below grade level and learned a lot, or way above grade level and learned almost nothing. You leave this meeting with questions bouncing around your head. Questions like, is our school level view of instructional progress different than the superintendent's view of accountability progress? Do we need to rethink how we count before we accept this new accountability system? Does progress mean something different to my teachers than it does to say our superintendent? If so, might each of them need a different way to measure progress? And how sure are we that students' answers to 35 or 45 questions can give us a precise measure of how much they've learned anyway? So what do you think? How do you define progress? And is there additional information that you would need before answering these questions? Next time, we'll take a look at a couple of additional data points to get a more holistic view of our students' scores. And hopefully, we'll be able to answer these questions and more.